Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Chat. I'm your host, Linda Riesenberg Fissler. And today joining me is my co founder and business partner, John Anderson. And we are going to be talking about um, actually the business series that we kicked off on our last one at the first week of February. Um, as we promised, we were doing first and third of the month when we can fit them in. We've got some things coming up that um, we may not be able to get um, first and third, but we'll, we're, we're going to try real hard to do that. So in this particular one, you know, we're going to be offering you guys um, business centric ideas that are going to prepare you for success. And um, so the first series, we, we talked kind of in general about what was coming up, and uh, that was in the last podcast that we did. And in this one, we're actually going to start talking about those centric business centric ideas um, that'll hopefully get you thinking. So you got some homework at the end of this. John doesn't know that I put homework in here, but, <laughs> but it's not that hard. So <laughs> it actually requires some you know, reflection and meditation, which are always good things to have. So John, why don't you kick us off and tell us what we've got in store for this, uh, this art chat. Thanks, Linda. Uh, sure. I hope you don't edit this out, but happy birthday yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> the power um, of the editing pen. No, I won't. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I think where I, okay. I think where I want to start out, uh, I have a favorite author. He's very well known. His name is Seth Godin. And I happen to believe that he's one of the world's greatest marketers. Uh, you might already know him. He's an entrepreneur, best-selling author, a speaker, and uh, besides launching one of his most popular blogs in the world, he has written 20 best-selling books. I'm not going to list them all here, but I will tell you that I'm going to make some uh, book recommendations in the, blog, uh, in the blog post, and so if you'll refer to that, you'll see some of the books that I read that are really in an effort to teach me more about art than they are about uh, uh, business, but I, I will list those from time to time. Uh, some of the more uh, recent books that he's done are called The Dip, Lynchpin, Purple Cow, which happens to be one of my favorite, Tribes, and a book of uh, particular value is one called What to Do When It's Your Turn, and it's always your turn. Linda, have you heard of any of his books? Um, I certainly have heard of Seth, and I um, know that a lot of artists read his blog. Um, so it, it was, you know, the weird thing is, is let's say 1990s into the 2000s, you would see artists posting his blog out on their social media networks and mm -hmm. talking about Seth. I haven't seen a lot of that lately, but then again, the only thing I see in social media anymore are ads, but you know, <laughs> so um, anyway, yeah, I have heard of Seth. I've not really written or read any of his books, but I have read some of his blog posts and, you know, he's, he's definitely an expert. So. Yeah. I, and when we get together again, uh, face to face, I'll bring some, some books that I think would be interesting to compare with you and maybe we'll do some trade-offs. Uh, but I do want to say there's a lady out there by the name of Esther Bluell, and she's done a review on uh, Seth's books. Uh, and it, in particular, she talks about uh, this one, what to do when it's your turn, and it's always your turn. And since a lot of this art chat is going to be a, focusing on you, and your core values and such, I wanna read the quote. She says, the book explores as directly as I can, the dance we all have to do with our fears, the tension we all must embrace in order to do work that we care about. It pushes us to dig deep inside so we can do better work and impact the things we care about. So that's kind of uh, food for thought, but you'll notice in there that it does address uh, fear. It's a word that's used throughout this book, and uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, uh, Linda, do you think artists feel fear in their relationship with the arts, whether they're actually painting or, or being involved in the different aspects of art? 
uh, especially when it comes to starting a project, say like an art business? Yeah, I, I, I do think that fear is kind of an overreaching or maybe an overarching word that, that we choose. Um, I think definitely when we start out um, and we, we don't have all the tools in our toolbox yet, uh, whether that be art skills or business business skills, I think there is a lot of fear there. It's like, well, now how am I going to get this done? Or how am I going to make this painting look fantastic and, you know, feeling? And you, so, yeah, that I think I kind of now, I after a lot of years, <laughs> let's just put it that way, um, I don't have as much fear as I have trepidation, I think. Um, which is part of, I mean, if you look it up in the dictionary, I'm sure fear comes into that definition somewhere in there. But, you know, there are techniques and there are ways. And I think Seth talks about this as well, that you can get beyond that fear and, you know, really start to enjoy your, your journey and, and what you're doing. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, do you ever, do you ever come to what I call that aha moment where you say, well, I've been in it for so long, I might as well stay in it. I'm, I'm working at it. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get into it. I, I went through and read your, your questions or whatever that you had for me. Okay. And, and so I have little notes on, the, on my computer here that I'm actually looking at. So we'll get in a little bit more about my journey, which I think is, you know, I think is unique. Of course, we all think our own journeys are unique. And that's a good thing because a lot of times they are. Um, but I certainly had to overcome that. But I, I'd have to say... I don't, I mean, yeah, you see fear in me every once in a while when we start talking business concepts and, and you have your idea of what's going on or what, what we're going to accomplish. And I, and you can kind of see the fear in my eye or on my face at, at, at some points. Um, John is a much bigger dreamer than I am. So it's, and I'm a pretty big dreamer. So that's saying yeah. a lot. So, and, 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 and he actually has made people's dreams come true because he, he knows this stuff and he, I mean, he knows how to get things done. So um, I'm learning to trust John a lot more. And so now I, I can say that my trepidation or my fear is turned more into excitement about the adventures we're gonna embark on. And um, I mean, what's the worst thing that can happen, right? You know, right. <laughs> somebody says no, or somebody doesn't buy a painting or, you know, maybe this this thing doesn't work out and we decide later you know okay we're going to try something different but it but i think the most important part of that what comes out of that is to look at what we've learned right and then go explore the new adventure with the knowledge that we have so nothing even if it doesn't work and even if it doesn't work in a painting you haven't lost anything you've gained a lot and you learn how to not make that same mistake, although I seem to keep making the same mistake. It's in my paintings, but you know, no. they're smaller though. <laughs> they're smaller <laughs> mistakes, easier to hide. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, you know, you've learned so much from taking that step and overcoming that fear. And it turns into, I guarantee you after a while, it turns into excitement. And yeah. um, you, just, you just need to get that stuff in your toolbox that makes it exciting. And that's why Artistic Harmonies is here and why John and I are here, so. Well, you, you bring up a, a lot of interesting points there. One in particular is it relates to business. I have found over my <clears throat> plus years that uh, <laughs> when I talk to people about business or they come to me and say, well, I'm thinking about opening a business or I hope one day to be in a business or I wanna do this, but I'm not sure how it's to be done. A lot of that is a form of fear. It's a right. lack of, or, or just a hesitation to commit. It's not knowing what's coming ahead. And of course, that's what uh, Linda and I are going to convey to you as creative people, as artists. How do you really get started with the nuts and bolts of making this something that you can make a living off of, or that you can uh, get some notoriety, that can you really immerse yourself in your, your passion and your purpose? So we'll get to those along the way too. I hope you'll stay tuned for those. I wanna go back to Seth just a minute because again, I consider him a tremendously creative person. And in one of his publications, he says this, which is uh, about specifically creatives and art. He said, art is what we call the thing an artist does. 
It's not the medium or the oil or the price or whether it hangs on a wall or you eat it. What matters, what makes it art, is that the person who made it overcame the resistance, ignored the voice of doubt, and made some, something worth making. Something risky, something human. So I think in that quotation, it tells you, uh, and the kicker to the end of that quote, he said, I is, art is not in the eye of the beholder, it's in the soul of the artist. And so I think as a creative, as an artist, as a business person that looks at different businesses to find out what to invest in or what to be involved in, it ultimately comes back to what's in their soul, mm -hmm. their purpose, their heart, that wanting to be in, in, involved in, and as Linda said, to, to finally see your dreams come to uh, fruition. So I just wanted to start that here. And uh, I think it's a very good lead in for our topic today, which uh, I call identifying your core values. And that basically, I like to say it's deciding what to do when seeking a meaningful relationship with passion and purpose. I believe that a lot of artists struggle with finding direction and making choices and taking action. And people in business are in that same fold of, of thought. But when you concentrate on finding your core values first, most things become crystal clear. And, and then it's not as fearful or you're not as hesitant to try something out. Uh, with, the, with the proper research and assessment of your individual core values, you can lead yourself to a better place and a meaningful life, especially in the art world. Let's see, what's missing in that statement? The answer that I came up with is it's important to find a way with passion and purpose, one where you can be true to yourself. And if you'll recall, I said this, this particular episode of our chat is to let you know that this is all about you. I reemphasize that in my blog post that I referred to earlier. And so keep in mind, it's not selfish to think about yourself. This is going for your goals, dreaming your dream, doing the things you want to do. Okay, now let's, let's uh, Linda, let's me, let me ask you this. This is one of my canned <laughs> questions that I had written down. Uh, you are my true art partner. I, I'll be honest, I've looked everywhere for the right person. And I feel like that uh, uh, you're just the, what do you call it? The yin of my yang or whatever as it comes to art and business. <laughs> but anyhow, I wanted to ask you, I'd like to know if your passion and purpose in art is similar to mine in business. Do you see any relationship at this point? It, was your passion and purpose there when you made your decision to pursue the arts? Or did it grow in the process? Ooh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Let me go lay down on a couch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I guess I, I'm not sure how much um, my podcast audience is familiar with my journey. So let me talk a little bit about that. And hopefully within that, we can start. Um, nailing down some of the, you know, did it grow in the process? I, I kind of lean towards, yeah, it did grow in the process. But I also wanted to um, say that I really actually started my painting journey and my author journey when I was working full time at Procter and Gamble. So um, I wrote my first, the first book, Blind Influence. Um, while I was working. So I did that on break. Um, I did that, you know, after work, I wrote scenes, I, I would have these compact writing sessions. You know, I was single at this time, too. So life was a lot simpler. <laughs> um, but you know, it's like, I would start Friday when I got home from work, and I would just write all weekend, and then pretty much just, you know, fall down and get some sleep so that I could go back to work on Monday. So um, I really didn't start painting until I was in my 30s, and I was still working at Procter & Gamble. 
So my passion when I was 18, 19, 20s, up until 31, 32, somewhere in there, was to be a screenwriter, a writer, a novelist, a director, and then artists came along later. Um, and it was like the pressures of working at Procter and Gamble, uh, Fortune 500 company. It's all about you know return on investment, and it's all about marketing the products and you know and what you can do to make Procter and Gamble's goals and objectives and measurements and and all of that. That was you know they they were paying me to make my share go up, my share of stock go up and, and also the stock in the company. So, um, you know, I didn't have a family that could support me just saying, I'm going to go out to college and I'm going to learn to be a screenwriter at USC, which was my ultimate dream, my ultimate passion. So I had to adjust that because we just, I mean, we just didn't have the money. So, you know, I went to work and worked there for 26 years. Um, and then after 26 years, um, and I, I was dared basically by the human resource director that I, and told that I would never be a manager. So I did, when I resigned, I was a manager. So I met that goal and it was like, okay, that's done. That's the, <laughs> that's the corporate world. I want out of here. So <laughs> after 26 years, I walked away. Um, but I also, you know, started uh, painting, you know, back in the late eighties and into the nineties. So, um, you know, at that time, I was like, I, I want to pursue what I want, what I thought I was going to live for, which was painting and writing and uh, directing and, and all that kind of stuff. And the directing and the screenwriting, since we have a mutual friend that is <laughs> involved in that, you learn a lot through being a mutual friend. It's not something that at my age of 60, I want to walk into, but certainly I've been writing for, you know, since my 20s, I've been painting since my 30s. So, um, you know, and I had this, this group of business skills that were developed by one of the country or one of the international companies, Fortune 500, basically. So, and you had to learn business skills when you were at Procter & Gamble, you know, whether it be marketing, because you had to market your projects, um, you had to give it a reason to be funded, you had a reason, you had to give it a reason why the, the consumer would want it. You know, you had to find all of that information out. You had to be, you had to think both with creative mind and with, you know, but in a business sense. So, um, yeah, so I kind of saw, I start, I kind of started to, to look at um, my life after I achieved the goal of making that HR director eat, eat his words. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I decided that I wanted to pursue my artistic and creative side outside of the business corporate world and um, bring some harmony to my life. So, and thanks to my husband who uh, was working at the, in the Department of Defense at the time, he was, he supported that. And so I left P&G with nothing basically set up for my art career. Um, you know, looking back on it, I had a lot of practice to do and I had a lot of learning to do about the art world. And, um, you know, basically, no regrets, none at all. So I would say that my passion grew over the years and also knowing that my purpose wasn't to stay at Procter & Gamble <laughs> for 40 years or whatever and retire. It was, you know, I had had enough after 26 years and said, you know, I don't want to play this anymore, play this game anymore. And I want to go pursue my passion and my purpose, which I think was my creativity as well as bringing business knowledge to either the writing world or the art world. So how'd that sound, doctor? <laughs> that sounds good, but you know what? You, you, you bring up a trick question now, mm -hmm. and I guess what I wanna ask you is, in that process that once you said, I'm just not gonna work at Procter & Gamble anymore, was it a series of aha moments after that? Was it something that you said, you know, I think I'll write a book or, uh, I think I'll just go out and buy some paint and get started. How, how did that come about? Um, well, like I said, I, with my writing, I was doing it during, because my goal, my, you know, my business plan when I was 18 was I was going to work at P&G, put every single paycheck in the bank, and then I was going to leave for California. And yeah. I made it as, and I made it as far as Indianapolis and went, you're a fool. You're going out there without any job. <laughs> <laughs> so I turned around and said, this business plan isn't exactly working. 
Um, but then, you know, with the pressures of work, it became more of a, um, I couldn't sneak in the writing like I did because I had work responsibilities and I had home responsibilities. Yeah. So um, I be, I, when I started painting, it became uh, a Thursday night escape, basically. Um, see. So, and then when I actually resigned, um, I don't really want to get into what happened, but P&G was in the midst of changing. There was no more John Smale. And um, anybody who follows business stuff, they know Jack Welsh. Well, John Smale's right there next to him. And um, P&G went from what I think was a very caring and somewhat family-oriented company to a very business-driven company. And it was all about getting your projects done and meeting your time frame which probably they needed to do to survive. I'm not saying that that was a bad thing, but the whole environment changed. And I already felt like I was giving 130% and they were asking for 30% more. And it was like, there was no life outside of p and I mean, I was literally supporting a global project and would, ha and would have to wake up at three in the morning to make sure that the servers were up. Oh, and it's like, you know, and I got to bed maybe at midnight because I was dealing <laughs> with another part of the world that was just starting its day. So, yeah. yeah. So between, you know, and I lost my mother at that point. And, you know, so it really got to the point where I had to sit back and say, is this really what I want to do for the next, you know, 20 years or so? And um, the answer was no, that's not what I wanted to do. So without getting that was too a, much that was the aha moment. <laughs> yeah that was the aha moment was i was not going to do that i mean if anything yeah. the way png handled some things um was the aha moment of i don't need to be treated this way and you know taking that power back and waving goodbye <laughs> so, so yeah so i mean yeah right the aha moment definitely was i want to be more creative and i, I don't need to do this this stuff anymore so very very interesting well i you know i want to get off i want to get down to talking a little bit about core values uh and again we're making or i'm making suggestions here about things that i think that a creative needs to think about very long and hard mm -hmm. and the core values that you have with your art i can tell you will roll over into whatever business if you decide to start your own business or refine your existing business these core values uh you probably ought to take a look at uh i think some of them are just very very obvious but uh gosh i don't have time to go over the hundreds and and you would fall asleep about number uh, three or four <laughs> uh, i'm going to go ahead and mention some of these that i've written down um the, the first one is respect. I mentioned earlier that this, uh, this particular art chat is about you. And that's not selfishness. You really need to think about who you are deep down inside, what it is you want out of life. Go ahead. Yeah, I, I just want to clear up something. When you, since you're asking me questions, yeah, I don't want yeah. you to think, I don't want the audience to think that when you're saying you, you're talking to yeah. me. You're talking yes. to the audience. When he's saying, okay. you know, you he's not talking yeah. to me he's talking to the audience i'm his co-founder i already know this stuff <laughs> so, okay. yeah i and mean that, i so, didn't even yeah. think about that but that's yeah. that's the way it is right well whatever y'all would like to be called <laughs> and you, the not, audience again yeah. yeah yeah uh okay then uh, sorry i didn't the, mean to interrupt the first, your thought <laughs> no no that's okay anyway i wanted to talk about the core values of respect the individual respect you that people have for themselves uh, and the respect that they should show to others. It's it, respect is in essence a way to to develop the character traits that really put people out in the forefront, I think, of, of art and business. Uh, respects for others are universal, but respect for self is kind of the pinnacle. It's the summit. It's like when you get to the top and there's no other place to step up, you've reached that. So keep that in mind here, uh, that the same goes for your art business. You never climb a mountain without knowing that you've got a lot of steps to do, 
uh, to get to your ultimate success. Creativity, I d probably don't even need to bring this up, but uh, 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 your creativity is developed through curiosity, expression, critical uh, things that come up in terms of learning your trade. Self-reflection uh, is another thing I've got written down here. Practice and most importantly, develop a mastery of skills. You wouldn't attempt to build a house from scratch and make a lot of mistakes on that and then say, well, I think I'm gonna build another one the same way. You need to learn through that process. And I believe as a creative person, you'll absorb uh, some things that, that we have to teach you and uh, that your, I guess your, we call it the journey, your journey to become a really fine masterful artist is in all that, that work. Uh, Linda, I've got, I've got a question for you. <laughs> uh, where do you place creativity in your list of values? Oh, I, I think it's very, very high. I've um, maybe, I would put it maybe number one, but only because mm -hmm. The respect that you talk about, I feel I have here because I, mean, I create basically in my studio um, and in my life, I think it's, you know, I have some respect, but I mean, there's definitely times when I really wonder about others, people respect of my work and, and what I'm doing. But um, yeah, creativity is definitely, you know, one or two, depending on the situation that I'm in at the time. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I agree with that too. And I, I've learned a long time ago that, uh, of course, creativity is not such a uh, big force in, in business, except for the fact that you're always looking for strategies to innovate, to make things better, to differentiate from other people. And the list goes on and on. How you market, where you market, all those things are, uh, are at the base, come from creative thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but one of the keys there, which brings me to my next core value is determination. Uh, this is not easy. And when I say it's not easy, I know it's not easy to be an artist. Mm -hmm. It does take training. It takes a considerable amount of time constructing your core values as well as just your values. It, it is a, a frightening thing to think about. And I believe that's why a lot of people don't commit. So I'm going to talk about the value determination now. It's formed by addressing those things of commitment and hard work and integrity and resilience and perseverance. Um, I, I guess you all have heard of the, the old saying, how do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Well, it's the same thing with art. You know, how do you become successful in art? You practice, you learn, you practice, you learn, and you move forward. Business is the same way. Business it has words like pivot. Oh, I made a mistake. I got to pivot and do something different. Your creativity kicks in and you figure out ways to resolve problems or issues by making appropriate decisions. Uh, a, a favorite, uh, another favorite author of mine is Andy Andrews. And he says you must persist without exception. And so, I, I think you get to a point in your process of whether you're a creative or in art or whether people are creatives in business that you get to a point that it says, do I go or no go? Have I got what it takes? Can I succeed? Then I'm going to do this. And that particular go or no go aha moment is telling you there's no turning back. I have to persist with that exception. I have to find the solution to make myself successful. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, that's all I wanted to say about determination. Linda, tell me how you feel uh, as far as the practice as an artist, uh, how much of it depends on determination? And do you have any examples in, in your life as an artist where you maybe did something that said, I got to start over or did something that said, I'm determined to get this piece finished. Yeah, it's, um, 
as far as I'm concerned, the art process, the writing process, the creative process, however you want to refer to that, from start to where I currently am, um, is basically entirely based on passion. If I didn't have the passion, the determination wouldn't be there. Um, so, you know, and when I think about painting or if I think about writing, there's always a constant desire to improve. But more importantly, it's it's me exploring, um, which keeps me thinking and keeps me interested. So, and I'm not just talking about like the art process itself. The last thing I wanna become is formulaic in my paintings. Um, and it's really great to have someone like our honorary member, Jean Peterson, for Jean to like just push me in the way that I'm thinking about how I'm seeing things. And her latest series does that um, for me. And, you know, being able not just to learn a lot about the impressionistic style that I absolutely love and that I basically paint in, but also to just kind of step outside that box and play a little bit um, and explore a little bit more because I think that journey helps us to. Um, become better at what we're trying to become better at. So persistence and determination are a key cornerstone to making it a career. And, um, you know, I was sitting there thinking today while I was putting this together, I've been doing this. I have been doing either writing or painting for 40 years. Um, and probably even before that, if I count my high school years when I was writing, I actually started writing when I was nine years old. I wrote scripts of my favorite TV shows. So I never published them. I never sent them. I sent one in We got rejected, but it was okay. And you know, that's when I walked, this is a great example of persistence and determination. That's when I walked away from my writing. I sent in a script to Star Trek, The Next Generation, and it was rejected. And I thought, well, okay, I'm, I'm not a good writer. And I put it in an envelope, but I always kept that rejection because I was proud of the fact that I took the step and, and tried, okay? I was stupid enough <laughs> to let somebody tell me that I wasn't a good writer in that. So in 2015, when I was down in my studio painting, I found this um, manila envelope and, I, and it was from Paramount. And I thought, what is this? What, you know? pulled it out. And then I realized in there that um, Eric Stilwell, who was the, who was then kind of like the big guy in charge of Star Trek, um, sent me a note back. That was the rejection note. But he also included everything I needed to resubmit that script. So it wasn't that he thought I was a bad writer. It was Linda thought I was, <laughs> it was a bad writer. So <laughs> So, you know, of course, Star Trek The Next Generation isn't on anymore. So there was no follow-up that I could have done. And of course, this was in 2015. And I thought, I'm going back to my writing. And then that's when I published my first book. So I let something deter me there. And my determination to be a writer went away. Um, but then in 2015, I found it again. So, you know, there's 30 plus years of art skills development and writing skill development. And because when you're an artist, you also better know how to write because you're gonna write an artist statement. You're gonna write a business plan. You're gonna write a whole bunch of things that uh, require good skills. And coming up on a blog is a, an article from one of our honorary members, Jamie Markle, who used to work for FNW. Um, Jamie and I, uh, worked on an article together when Jamie was working as the uh, publishing editor for the artist magazine and uh, other FNW publications. And we went over this article again, and Jamie was kind enough to update it. So, you know, and that's the title of the thing is like, what do you mean I have to be a writer? I'm an artist. Well, all these things overlap. And um, in the 30 years, 40 years, 50 years <laughs> that I've been doing this, there's been tremendous growth in all of that. And, and I think that determination also makes you decide whether you're going to be a hobbyist at something or whether you're going to make this your career. And this is what you are. So when somebody says, what do you do? You come back with, I'm a fine art artist, or I'm a literary artist or author or whatever. I think that all of those are, are cornerstones. Um, 
the best and admittedly the, the best learning that I've got was being in one of the best fortune 500 companies for learning business. I usually always refer to it as Procter and Gamble university. And I was there for 26 years. <laughs> so, so, you know, there's definitely, um, the determination enters into it. And if you want to, and if you decide that you don't want to have that determination, but you want to be a hobbyist, there's nothing wrong with that either. Um, you can still sell paintings as a hobbyist. You can, you know, so you still need, even as a hobbyist to understand a little bit about this business stuff that we're talking about, because you don't want to be taken advantage of as a, as a hobbyist either. So just my few little comments on that. <laughs> so. Well, but again, that that's a that, that's a great way of uh, really telling about what Aha is all about, what uh, Artistic Harmonies is all about, uh, and that is that we want to bring people together as individuals right. and to actually, by way of networking and connections, help you with your with your path in art, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, well, we'll go into more of these details as, as we get farther along, but I think the, the main point that I wanted to make here is that art and business are very similar and that one goes hand in hand. So I would suggest that if you would keep tuning in, keep looking at the blogs. Uh, uh, I'm gonna turn this back over to Linda. And the only thing I ask is that you continue to visit the website read our blog and uh, I'll, I'll put those recommendations for books in there. Okay. What else am I missing? Linda? So you didn't want to talk about individuality? Well, not, I don't think so at this time, because again, next, next episode, uh, again, we drill a little bit deeper and we're going to talk about uh, uh, more about the individual, how you, how you feel about yourself. And so we'll get more into individuality next time. Okay. Okay. Um, yep, that's fine. <laughs> You're leading the business side, John. So okay. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I guess in, in closing, what I'd, I'd like to do, this is your homework, homework <laughs> um, that I'm gonna ha ask you to do is I'd really would like you to challenge you, our listeners, to think about how you are doing business today. But more importantly, I want you to think about why you are doing it the way you're doing it. Okay, so that can start with asking yourself, you know, what have I been doing? What's working? What isn't working? Why isn't it working? And then think about it in regards to like building a following or what authors call platform. People who will, oh my gosh, you got a new painting out. Oh my gosh, you got a new book out. You know, that they're gonna be waiting for that next product, okay? Um, I want you to think about it in regards to sales and establishing your brand. Why are you doing certain things a certain way you are doing them? Um, are you copying a way of doing things because you were told that's the way to do it or because others have been successful doing it, but it may not necessarily be working for you. So really, I, I really do want you to deep, dig deep on this. And, um, and then I want you to also think about the popular artists that are out there today and ask yourself, do you think they got there overnight? And you see John's already shaking his head no. And, and yeah, you know, basically um, they didn't get there overnight. They have been at some point where we are right now in our career and they have either found some way to get past that, found some way or someone to help them get past that. And that, you know, most of the popular artists don't work in a silo. Okay, so let's think about that. You know, are you doing what you're doing because you're copying a popular artist's path? Well, that worked for the popular artist. It may or may not work for you. So really, you know, or somebody else says, you know, you have to you have to get there by doing practice, 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 as we talked about with the Carnegie Hall thing. 
but you could practice painting as much as you want. But if you're ignoring your brand, if you're ignoring, you know, how to get your name out there so people will follow you, you can practice all you want. It's still not going to, you know, it's, there's, there's dependencies there. You, you've got to get people to know you. So um, there's a whole, a whole thing of um, continuing, you know, once you become a popular artist, Continuing to be a popular artist or a successful one uh, requires a lot of thought, a lot of planning, a lot of establishing a marketable brand, knowing yourself and what you want, um, you know, creating and, and continuing to have a technical base or foundation for your art skills. And, and again, these are only tips of the iceberg. I, John is like, I, he didn't know I was going to say this. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, so he may have. It's good. I, I I just said to that P and G didn't become a Fortune five hundred company overnight. No, they didn't. You know, so you you have to think out with that. soap and candles. Yes, that's right. Yep. So and now they're across so many different consumer products that you know, and then they've sold some of those off. Duncan Hines is no longer Procter and Gamble. Folgers is no longer Procter and Gamble. So they saw the market changing. So they didn't just stay with soap and candles. If they would, they would have been out of business by now. So good point, John. So like we said, what's the typical tip of the iceberg? John and I aren't blowing smoke, you know where, okay? We, we're talking about breaking the mold and talking about different approaches that you can say, okay, I'm practice, 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 but I'm practice, practice, practicing not only my art skills, but I'm building my business and I'm practicing building my business and changing and, and doing that. And, and if somebody says to you, oh, practice, practice, practice is the way to get there. And maybe one day you'll get lucky. Don't listen to them. I'm sorry. Right. Don't right. listen to them because they don't know it. They don't know how to tell you to get to your place. We will help you. That's, that's the, the big key thing. So again, just to sum up, think about where you are today, how you're doing business and why you're doing the things you are doing. And I want to challenge you to do that. And if you want to tell us what that is, we'd love to hear from you. Okay. So um, I guess that's, that's pretty much it. Johnny, you have anything to answer? Cause I did spring that on you. No, no, that's fine. I, I would just say too, I, I want to uh, reinforce what Linda said in terms of if you've got some things on your mind, ask us questions. It doesn't hurt to send us an email and say, well, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? It helps stimulate that thought and helps us all work together for uh, uh, the opportunity for good. So uh, just stay in touch with us, you know, engage with us and we'll do the best we can to help you get where you want to be. Yep. Remember each of our adventures are remarkably different and we can't just ignore that fact. So right. um, anyway, I hope you guys found a lot of interesting comments and information in this art chat. Uh, we'll be doing um, episode three in a couple in a week or so. Um, the first week of March is the target date for us to record the next one. So um, look for that that first week of March. And we uh, hope you guys tune in next time. Thanks a lot for listening. Thanks, John. Bye -bye. Bye-bye. Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us.